We're here together for another Tisha B'Av in San Diego. I didn't think we would get here this year. This last year has been a year of Tzalot, both for the world, also for the community of Am Yisrael, and for our own personal Jewish community here at Kinnat Shal Shalayim. And I didn't, I didn't plan on being here this year. But we're here yet again. We have no choice but to take responsibility for the fact that we're here. Tonight is Tisha B'Av. How is this night different from all other nights? All other nights my job is to help. To emulate our Creator and try to lift each other up. From the lowest dumps, HaKadosh Baruch Hu can pull up anybody. But tonight, tonight is a different night. Our crown has fallen. It's okay. It's okay for one night for us to sit and mourn and not to feel good. And not to walk away from this shiul feeling any happier or any better. There's a time for everything, says Shlomo Amalekh. And there's a time to be sad. Kidai hu bet Our bet mikdash is worth it to mourn over it. <coughs> Inevitably, part of being in Galut and exile is that not only have we lost our bet mikdash, but literally every single one of the tzarot, tzarot, Every one of those sufferings, the calamities, the terrible things that have happened to Am Yisrael in our exile are directly connected, directly connected to the loss of our Ben Mikdash. What would have been if while Europe was burning down with the Crusaders, if when Spain was busy hunting Jews in the street, if when Europe was going door to door, taking Jews away from their families and their homes? What would have been if there were no Jews to take? If there were no Jews to hunt? If we were home, in our own home, in our own state, with our brothers and our sisters, and our HaKadosh Baruch with us, and our Ben Mikdash, and our Jewish forces there under the guidance of HaKadosh Baruch to protect us, what would have been then? This kina that we're about to study tonight. Al tuv anashim asher humatuv. Humetuv. About the tuv, how many people are tuv? Tell me the gematria. Tet? Seventy. So tet is? Nine. Vav? Six. That is? Fifteen. Plus bet? Which is two, that's seventeen. On the 17 Jews which were killed. For those who are watching this live and those who are watching this later online, this shiul is not recommended for children. On March 26, 1917, that's the 3rd of Nisan. The 3rd of Nisan, it's Mamash a few days before Pesach. 1917. It's 104 years ago today. In the Nachal Chidekel. What is the Chidekel? What's the name of that river? We have two rivers in Babel. The Tigris. We have the Nalpat, Euphrates on one side, and the Chidekel, the Tigris on the other side. On March 26, 1917, A sack was found floating in Nachal Chidekel in the Tigris River. When the sack was opened, the body of a young Jewish man by the name of Shlomo Zion, the son of Rachamim, was found floating in that sack. With his hands tied 
and rocks inside of that sack, intending to drown him in the Tigris River. We know that description of how he was found because his son, his son left us a letter telling us exactly how his father's body was found. The story takes place in Baghdad of 1917. Baghdad in 1917 is under Ottoman rule and the Jews of Baghdad are in for a moment of redemption but before that a terrible moment in history when the armies of Baghdad are preparing for an invasion of the British from the south. The British were coming in it's part of their conquest here of Baghdad. And always when two countries fight with each other, the people who suffer are those caught in the middle. And in this place, Am Yisrael. Tonight, we're going to study a peut called Shodadu Mi Bet Megurehem. They were stolen, ransacked from their homes. This peut was written by the younger brother of Shilomo Tzion, the son of Rachamim. His name was Yitzchak, otherwise known as Rabbi Yitzchak Nisim. On the left, the Sephardic chief rabbi in the land of Israel, after Chacham ben Tzion Merchai Uziah. His older brother was Shalom Tzion, whose body was found in the Tigris River. And for the funeral of his brother, he wrote to the piyut that we are about to study today. But a little bit of history first. This is the Tigris River, the banks of the Tigris River, where Shalom Tzion was found. This kina that we're going to study tonight was written by Rabbi Yitzchak Nisim before he became the chief rabbi. And it was published in a little booklet by the son of Shlomo Tzion, called Rafael Shlomo Tzion, who published a book in honor of his father, in which he writes the following words, Biyamim ha'ele, in these days, yimei ben ha'mitzarim, between Shiv'asar v'tamuz and Tisha B'av, the three weeks, I wish to publicize Perek Echad, just one chapter. I wish to publish so history will not forget. A brief episode of the cruelty and the evil of those who ruled over Baghdad during the World War. So this story will never be forgotten from our history, those who came from Babel, and we as brothers and sisters of the Jews who came from Iraq. The British come to fight the Ottomans. They're coming up from the south of Baghdad. And the people who suffer the most are the Jews. Their stores are pillaged. Their homes are robbed. Their businesses are ransacked, food, money, clothing, everything these people want, they take from the Jewish community. On Friday, February 16th, the 24th of Shabbat, so less than a month before Shalom Tzion's body is found in the Tigris River, the police officers of Baghdad begin to arrest Jews. They start rounding them up, these 17 Jews that were arrested, were arrested for one single crime. The Jews knew that the empire was going to fall. The Jews knew the Ottomans were not going to be in Baghdad for very long. And the Ottomans knew that they were not going to be in Baghdad for very long. So what do they wish to do? They wish to get out with as much money as they possibly could. And they put out a law 
that all gold and silver coins and any type of currency, anything made of gold and silver, must be turned into the Ottomans in return for paper money. Paper money that the Jews knew very quickly, already was losing value, but very quickly would be worth not even the paper on which they were written. Seems that these Jews did not want to turn in their money, and the Ottomans decided on February 16, 1917, to begin rounding up Jews that were suspected of keeping their money from being stolen by the Ottomans. There was a man by the name of Ahawon. Ahawon was a chazan. A chazan, a cantor in the local Berakneset. Ahawon was the first person who was brought to the police station in Baghdad. Ahawon the chazan, we know very little of what happened to him, aside from he was tortured in the most horrific ways. And by the time Shabbat was over, Ahawon Chazan was the first of the 17 who were murdered by the Ottomans because he refused to give up names of other Jewish people that they could arrest and torture to get their money. Ahawon Chazan gave up his life in an attempt to protect other Jewish people from being destroyed, tortured, and killed by the Ottomans. Like I told you a day later, he passed away. And that same Friday night, that same Friday night, Erev Shabbat and Shabbat, they arrested 15 more people. Among them, 85-year-old Yecheskel Baruch Dangul and his son Yosef, Eliyahu Dangul. The last name Dangul you may be familiar with. There was a famous Chacham with the last name Dangul. What was his name? Someone must know his name. Rabbi Ezra Dangu. Rabbi Ezra Dangu was one of the greatest Chachamim of Babel in the last generation. There's a gentleman who comes to pray here. His mother's ketubah was printed in the Bet, Bet Adin of Rabbi Ezra Dangu. I have a copy of it in my home. Yehuda Somech. These are last names that should be familiar to you. Somech, the famous Chacham. Abdullah Somech. Is all in the you? Family of Oren Achab. Sasson Sofer, the famous Sofer family of Baghdad. Many Chachamim came out of this family. Very famously, the one who we study the most probably here is the Kafa Chaim Sofer, the Biyakov Chaim Sofer, who wrote a commentary on the Shulchan Aruch. These are names, well known names in the Jewish community, who were arrested on that Friday night, taken from their homes after Kiddush, after Hamotzi by armed police officers of the Ottoman control of Baghdad. Shlomot Sion was arrested the following day on Shabbat afternoon after Tefillah in the Berakneset and he was number 17. From Friday night and Shabbat day when these men were arrested, their families tried with no hope to get in contact with them. They were outside of the prison screaming their names, trying to find them to the windows of that prison. They couldn't find them anywhere. They couldn't make contact with anybody who had seen them. On Tuesday morning, Rabbi Yitzchak Nisim, the younger brother of Shalom Sion, forces his way into the police station and he demands answers. There he meets Sasson Sofer, who tells him that his brother was taken in the middle of the night from the police station and he doesn't know where he is. In the writings of the sun, he writes, Ulamachawat, Ulamachoto, Nishtam Chazon Mikola Kadushi. The next day, we lost track of our father, Shalom Motsiyo. It was only two weeks later from this event, two weeks later, that Faik, the cruel, as he's called by the sun, Khalil Bey, I don't know how to pronounce his name in Arabic properly, and Saeed al Adin, who was the head of the police, the governor, the assistant governor, and the head of the police, they realized that the British were coming and they were coming fast, and they decided to book it out of Baghdad. On the holiday of Purim, that's on March 11th, 1917, the British burst through the gates of Baghdad and Rabbi Ezra Dangu 
on Tuv Adab, the 17th of Adab, declared a national holiday in Baghdad, that the Kadosh Baruch Hu saved the Jewish people from the hands of the Ottomans who were destroying them in Baghdad. Now, obviously, a later in history, not so long from now, in the same region of the Middle East, is going to have its own struggles with the British. But at this moment in history, the British saved the Jewish people from the hands of the Arab regime that was murdering them. It's two weeks later. And once the British are already in Baghdad, the body of Shalomot Sion is found floating in the river. I can tell you that from those 17 men that were taken away to prison, only Aharon, the Chazan, who was killed on Friday, Shabbat, and Shalomot Sion, whose body was found floating in the river, are the only two bodies that were ever recovered by the Jewish community, and the only two of those 17 who were buried in a proper Jewish burial in the Jewish cemetery. The other 15 men and their families never received the closure of being able to know what happened to their, their, their bodies and to bring them to a Jewish burial, to be able to say Kaddish, to be able to say Ashkava, to be able to even know which day of the year to mourn them on their Ashkava. This is the day on March 11th where the British, you see them coming into Baghdad. For those who are watching online, shiviti.org forward slash the number nine, the word of, you'll find the slideshow there as well. Here is the Benadin of Baghdad at the time. If I could just put on my glasses, I want to tell you the names of some of the Chachamim. You have on the three on the right, the three on the right, seem to be, if I remember reading correctly, that they are the Betadin of the rabbis in Baghdad. On the left, you see Rabbi Ezra Dangu. All the way on the left, you see him? That's Rabbi Ezra Dangu who made the holiday on the day that the British came in to Baghdad. The son of Shalom Sion writes, Al Meora Agumze, on this tragic episode, Arach Mordodi, Harav Rabbeinu Yitzchak Nisim. My uncle, because this is his uncle, my uncle Yitzchak Nisim wrote Hakina Dlahalan, the following Kina. אשר נקרא בתמרו המיוחדה בלוויית אבינו על הקבר הפתוח. He said, and we, the family, we cried this kina in the famous tune of this kina while my father's grave was still open. בהשתתפות כל הרבנים וקהל גדול של המלווים. With all of the rabbis who came, as well as all of the family members and the community that were there, they said this kina together. This kina that's in front of you right here was found in Yad Ben Svi. Yad Ben Svi is an institute, Mechon Ben Svi, I don't remember exactly what it's called. Named after the president, who for a different shiur and a different time and a different Tisha B'Av will talk about how he got his hands in so many Sephardic manuscripts and so many Sephardic artifacts, part of which was a plot to show Sephardim that even though they were able to protect their own manuscripts and their own artifacts for hundreds and hundreds or even thousands of years, that once they came to Israel, they were clearly too primitive to be able to do so on their own, and therefore they were confiscated and put into a museum, many of which we have found, and many of which are still missing. For a different story, at a different time. Tonight I want to read to you this kina, but I figured that instead of reading it to you, we could hear it being sung by Chazan Moshe Chabusha. Chazan Moshe Chabusha is a Baghdadi Chazan in Eretz Israel. He was the 
house chazan, in house chazan, of the late Chacham of the Yosef, a blessed memory. He has made it his life's mission to preserve much of Baghdadi Jewish tradition. He's put out records and CDs and teaches the next generation how to sing and pronounce Hebrew properly. This kina was printed, as I told you, in 1937. It seems that it was sung in Iraqi Jewish communities for about another 60 years. And after that, I don't know where it's still sung or who still sings it. But I figured tonight, we would owe our respects, offer our respects to those who lost their lives for being Jewish just days before they would have been freed. And because tonight, Tisha B'Av, is the Askara, is the yard side of the author of this kina, the late chief rabbi Yitzchak Nisim of blessed memory. He passed away on Tisha B'Av. And I figured that we could offer this as a blessing. If you'd like to follow along the words on your phone, you're welcome to go to shiviti.org forward slash the number nine, the word av, so nine av. And you'll find a few options over there. The last option on the page before last year's video class, you'll see I'll say rabbi's class. You can click download now and you'll find this slideshow and you're able to open it up to follow along with Chazan Moshe Chabusha. The song takes 12 minutes. I will pause in between the stanzas to explain to you what he's saying so you can understand for yourself. But I want for us to take tonight and mourn very specifically over these Jews who I don't even know if their descendants or the communities that were their communities still know to mourn them. And this Tisha B'Av, we offer them our respects. On the top of the page, it says, Kina betamru gerushim ibet anugim arucha me'en ben mul arachamim. This is a kina that is offered me'en. You see in bold letters? Mi'iti Yitzchak Nisim ben the son of Mola Rachamim. What's a Mola? In Arabic, it's like a like a a very respectable title. Al Tuva Nashim about the fifteen, the seventeen people, Asher Humutu that were murdered al yadeh hachzarim by the cruel men, the mitot meshunot with unusual. Cruel deaths. Alo Hamas bechapehem without doing any wrong. Michlalam achli and one of those were my brother. Vishmon iskar berashe habatim and his name is spelled out in the acronym. There's eleven stanzas here, and they spell out his name. Vinahagu lekonena biyom tisha b'av and the custom has become to say this kina on the day of tisha b'av bechol batayek nesiot. Asher po Baghdad, in all of the synagogues here in Baghdad, Yerachem Aleha Elohim, may HaKadosh Baruch Hu have compassion on Baghdad. Without further ado, I'll start with you the recording of Chazal Moshe Chavosh. This tune is unique to Iraqi tradition, and for those of you who may not be familiar with Iraqi songs, tonight you're going to hear a little of the keynote. There's a tune that is used in other places as well, but this kina is customarily sung to the following tune. You can follow along on this yellow page that's on the website or just looking at the screen above. <laughs> Hamas, 
בכפיהם ליבי ליבי על חלליהם מעי מעי על הרוריהם They were kidnapped from their homes on the day of rest, Shabbat, at the hands of their tormentors. And in their prison, their enemies tortured them. With terrible, terrible suffering, and they did nothing wrong. And the chorus that happens between every stanza, My heart, my heart, over their bodies, my insides, my insides, over their death. לפדיון נפשם כספם החרימו עת לידון בחמורה נתחייבו They gave up their money to try to save their lives, but it didn't work. And not only did they take their money, but they weren't even willing to let them off with a lesser punishment than death. And about this, about these and about this, our hearts are crying. They tortured them first by blinding them by poking out their eyes. They then took needles into their flesh and nails they hammered into their skulls. Our hearts cry over them. Oh, 
This is the poor suffering ones cried out to the God, the mighty one, the strong one. And we also are calling out to the strong God. May these deaths be our atonement. Or perhaps they called out that their death should be atonement. When their oppressors heard them praying to Hashem, they began laughing at them, mocking them. And like a lion that is about to devour its prey, they ground their teeth together. Their hands and their legs they bound, and with iron chains they strangled them. them who were hurting them they were the Ishmaelim the Ishmaelites they made them heavy with rocks inside of sacks and they threw their bodies into faraway rivers to hide them from their poor families who were suffering and yearning for them oh, what happened to them. Our hearts, we should pay attention to the story. We should raise our voices. We cry and wail like hyenas, is the word I would use. How could it be that the sword of revenge was cast upon them? <laughs> Nisat 
كلانو بما We must raise up our voices, says Rabbi Yitzhak Nassim, and cry, because we have an excessive amount of dead people in Am Yisrael. All of them have been murdered at the hands of Hagar, the mother of Ishmael, who is supposed to be our maidservant. And about this we cry. We, in, with their outstretched arm and in brazenness, the Ishmaelim raised their hand against the children of the living God. That's us. Virabim halgu ba'afechema. And they murdered many, many of us with anger. We were afraid inside of our homes and outside of them as well. There was nowhere to be safe from them. Oh, <laughs> The voices were raised, babies in their cribs at night were crying. A day in which Am Yisrael's blood was spilled, kegalan, like excrement, like nothing, our blood is worthless. And so far, Bitzak Nitzim goes us to mention the name, Faik HaAchzal, the cruel Faik, who was the ruler in Baghdad at the time. He, he tolal, he, he did evil against Am Yisrael. The final stanza of this kina. <laughs> Ve'ayneinu ye 
words that the Kadosh Baruch Hu should have compassion at our embarrassment should very quickly avenge our deaths from the hands of our enemies he should build for us our bed and and very soon our eyes be lit up and our hearts will be filled with joy I cannot imagine that in 1917 looking over his brother's tortured, murdered body in that grave, in the blood-stained earth of Baghdad, to this young man, Yitzchak Nesim, who wrote the words we just heard tonight. In his wildest dream, I don't think he could have imagined that not only would he and his family merit to leave Baghdad, but that he would become the Chacham Bashi, the Rishon Tzion, the chief Sephardic rabbi of the state of Israel, in the land of Israel, the most supreme position of a Sephardic Chacham in the entire world. And I think that belief in the Geula and the fact that you and I tomorrow may one day be in Yerushalayim is for us to think about as Tisha B'Av begins to leave us. But for right now, for right now we as Am Yisrael are standing over the open graves of our brothers and our sisters, all of whom have been killed and murdered, tortured, hurt by all of the nations in the world, those who actively hurt us and those who passively stood by and did absolutely nothing. Abutai, we're still in Galut. You and I are still sitting on earth that does not belong to us. You and I are just as vulnerable as any other people like Am Yisrael that has been in every galut and every place and every time. Tonight is a night to remember Tov, not just 17 people, but Tov, good people. Good people who for the smallest of reasons became the prey in the teeth of the lions that surround us and every single day wish to wipe us out. I don't ask you to leave here tonight. I don't ask you to leave here tonight happy, not to walk out of here inspired, but to walk out of here feeling just a little bit what it means that in every generation in which the Bet Dash has not been rebuilt, that generation is as if we destroyed the Bet Dash. We are still in exile. We are still living here. It's time for us to get up, to go home. Not just to go home, what we've done at home, our brothers and sisters have done for us at home, is only half of a job. It is time for us to feel the void. Because if we don't feel that we're missing something, we will never be motivated to do something to change our destiny. How many more keynotes can I miss right? How many more songs over more murdered Jews? Murdered Jews in Pittsburgh, murdered Jews in Harnoff, murdered Jews in San Diego. You and I were here two years ago. How much longer can we sit and think that by doing the same thing over and over and over again, that the end is going to be completely different this time? I'm asking you, 1953, 1,953 years we are sitting on the earth crying over our Bede Mikdash. We ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Ye'ir enenu, v'ismach libenu. May this be the year that He lights up our eyes, that He fills our hearts with joy. All of the captives of Hashem should return and we should return to Zion, to our home, with joy.